breaks a little bit over that hill. It's going to push this bait in from open water. <clears throat> it's going to suck them in a little bit. And we'll see a little bit more boils right when the sun com comes up right here. Out of 30 years throwing swim baits, this technique right here, <laughs> a slow rolling, has probably put more fish over 10 pounds on the boat than all other techniques. <laughs> And like I said, to this day, I, I still have not seen, in 30 years watching guys swim swim baits, I haven't seen not a handful of guys fish even a topwater this slow, you know, consistently. They've got it down now with some of the, uh, the nice plastic swim baits out there, slow rolling across the bottom. You know, guys have figured out that, that same technique, the super slow roll. Um, caught monster fish crawling across the bottom top of the surface that the top of the water column is no different than the bottom of the ground. It's another place that they can eat against. Air technically is hard, just as hard as the bottom of uh, the, you know, the structure underneath the water. So it's just another feeding plate. <clears throat> but for top water, like I said, you're going to see guys out here running the banks, throwing top water and they're going to be fishing as fast as they can for even stripers. And surprisingly the stripers, uh, Oh, look at the boil on that sucker. Oh, the stripers are keyed in sometimes on even the slower moving baits than more fast moving. Come on. See, this is how we roll in California when we get ready to film. <clears throat> Rainy, overcast, great fishing conditions for two weeks. <clears throat> Show up at the camera. Bluebird skies, post frontal, flat calm. You guys are good, man. There's a lot of other things going on too, guys, here. The weird part is we're kind of targeting stripers right now. If I was gonna come up and throw a swim bait for a largemouth, I preach a lot of the one cast concept. Largemouth are a different little predator, you know, where they're more structured, cover oriented. They really like eating up against stuff, against the funnels. Stripers are more nomadic. <clears throat> so in this spot, if I was hitting a bass, I'd make, you know, I'd hold the boat a little bit different and make one or two casts. I'd probably leave the spot. Stripers, they're going to run this open water and you're going to throw 20 times and, you know, the next cast after that, you might hook up with the 40 pounder. Um, so the techniques and the, the amount of time that you spend on certain fish change a little bit for the species. but the way you fish these baits, you know, they won't change much. Like I said, you put a top water on and you learn to super slow roll it and just keep your rod tip pointed at the bait and be ready. And if you feel just the slightest tick sweep into that fish, you, you have a, you're gonna catch a lot more fish right off the bat. We had a little bit more wind here, or just a little bit overcast. It increased that bite a little bit, but we could still make it happen. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the gear we're using. Early this morning, first thing, we were the first boats on the water. We ran over to the point. We were throwing the floater 8-inch BBZ-1 in the Silverfish, one of my favorite colors. We paired it up with the Lamy Glass Big Bait Special, Shimano Calcutta 400, and 25-pound Test Max Maline. You're going to see in this part, this cutaway, you're going to see a close-up of how slow I actually reel this bait. Pay attention to that. A lot of people fish their baits way too fast. Cradle the, bait, the rod in your hand, put the rod tip down towards the water, and you want to go this slow. You want to take it nice and slow. You want it just fast enough to make that bait swim. We did show a couple other little cutaways on fishing it against uh, bluff walls and stuff. Think about that when you're fishing this bait. This is just for the floater, but we have the slow sink and fast sink. So make sure that depending on the situation and what you see at your lake, that you pick up the right tool, the right equipment to throw it, and uh, try to create a, a funnel. Try to make the bait come into something and do a directional change, and you're going to see a lot more fish in your boat. I'm going to test it here. They're eating one inch bait. I want to give it a little try too. We're going to talk about this this a little bit later today, but it's one of my secret rigs I've been doing for years. 
finally got let out, the cat's out of the bag. <clears throat> but uh, that new little 2.5 I made for Spro this year has been catching a lot of fish. A little bit later in the, the technique parts of it, we're, we're gonna break it down. I'm gonna show you some cool way to rig it and hopefully today we'll catch some fish doing some stuff out of the box. Before 40 boats get over in the rock quarry, that's going to be our uh, our next shot of pulling pulling some magic off. Man, there's a fish. Oh, nice fish on a little double rig. Little 2.5. There's these neat little little tricks that you could do with these. And when there's this much bait out there, a lot of times just using one little bait, it's hard to target these fish to make them commit.